Damn, morning, you home, so that means you can't put on a blazer or something? I mean, why are you looking like you just got out of bed and you just threw on a shirt just to do a segment on a TV? Collar, I mean, I what's up with that? A button -up shirt on. On. What I mean, your, you your, your me? collar ain't even stopped. I mean, what's me? up? That's not even the big story, Stephen A. I got a button up shirt for you. That's all I'm just you saying. Get. I mean, can, you can't put on a blazer or something? I mean, damn, it's TV, man. Stephen A. Damien I'm used to be home. sitting in his living room like Scarface. I know. With the columns behind him and everything. Then the kids pushed him into a little corner of the... Of, of, of That's right. After, after they had him the do TikTok. You know where they had him do TikTok. Da Damien's oh going to be in the bathroom God. doing the you, show pretty wait, soon. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> Damien's on TikTok? Yes, he was. Yeah, he was. Yes, oh, he was. Oh, my God. He, he thought I forgot about that. I didn't forget about that. Damien, there's another did, instant... Molly, I did one video. One Molly, wait, hold on. Yeah, wait, 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 I mean, that was the cutest Damien thing is, is a secure I ever army, saw you know. in my life. He did that? Yes, on Instagram. I didn't it was know that. so you know, big, adorable. Hey, you know, yes. Big Wood loved the kids, man. You know. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. That's what it's all about. Big Wood loved the hold kids, up. man. That's Damien Post. He, he sure Major does. Prep. He sure does. He sure does. You got to add that line. He sure does. All right. Love the kids. Producers sure are does. killing me. They, yeah, so you got to add that line. I mean, I'm killing producers, rather. They want me to get to the top of here, so let's do it. Max, does Lamar have more to prove than Big Ben in this matchup? Actually, he doesn't. You know, if this was a couple of years ago, sure, for Big Ben. And Roethlisberger, let me be very clear. For a 38-year-old coming off a catastrophic injury for which he missed a season, especially, remember, it was the, it was the ligaments in his right elbow and I remember Roethlisberger talking about, like, the doctor told him he'd never see, like, this has never happened to a quarterback before, like, that kind of injury. For him to come back and play the way he's played is amazing. By those standards, he's doing great, and he's a real NFL quarterback again. But he hasn't been Ben Roethlisberger quite. Not yet. He's been, like, you know, if you want to hold him to his previous standard, he's not yet measuring up. I didn't expect him to right out the gate, and yet it is what it is through a bunch of interceptions last time we saw him. He looks like a solid, right now, kind of middle-of-the-pack quarterback with a great defense. And by the way, some receivers in a running game, too. Roethlisberger, when he's really Roethlisberger, is, if not an MVP candidate, then the very next thing to it. We haven't seen that from him. And furthermore, I believe, as much as, you know, Stephen A., I'll leave Lamar Jackson to you, but whatever struggles they have in their passing game, the Steelers also, through the year, have not been amazing. They're, the Steelers are going to be more dependent on Roethlisberger being the best version of himself if they're serious about contending for a Super Bowl championship this year and they have the team to do it. Oh, please. Ben Roethlisberger don't have anything to prove until playoff time. He's a Super Bowl. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion. He's been to three Super Bowls. He's coming off an injury, and even still, they're 6-0 with him. Completing 68% of his passes, just 13, I mean, touch, 13 touchdowns with just four interceptions. Brothers balling. Even though, QBR. Listen, who cares? The bottom line is, is that, again, he's going to be held accountable come playoff time. Lamar Jackson, even though he's got something to prove in the playoffs, and they got the second worst pass in attack in football. The second worst pass in attack. They rank 31st. He's completed about 63% of his passes. He's running the football effectively because he always does, but he clearly still hasn't been that dude you need him to be as a passer. When you talk about having something to prove, going up against this Steelers defense, with that secondary, the way they've been getting after the quarterback as well, the way they've been playing overall as a defense, Lamar Jackson needs to show up and do his thing. Not running the football, I'm talking about, because we all know what he can do with that. I'm talking about actually throwing the football. That's what Lamar Jackson needs to do. I think he's the one that has to show a lot. Big Ben Roethlisberger just needs to stay healthy and get him to the playoffs. Tracy McGrady, Chris Paul. Patrick Beverly, Montrez Harrell, Lou Williams, Russell Westbrook, Clint Capella, James Harden, <laughs> Dwight Howard, you name it, he has acquired all of those players over the year. Uh, Woj, good morning. Welcome in. You just broke the news at finalizing it this week to bring his magic to Philly. What more can you add? Well, it, it's it, as you said, it was just a little over a week ago that he left 
the Houston Rockets. And Daryl Morey uh, initially said he planned to take a year off and, you know, gave it the obligatory, I'm going to spend some time with my kids. They're on a gap year. Uh, but Philadelphia uh, started pushing immediately to try to bring him to uh, the Sixers. They got that done. Uh, they're just finalizing the language in a deal now. And, you know, suddenly there's been a pretty – Pretty significant transformation in Philly. Daryl Morey is the president of basketball operations, is, is the title, I'm told. And obviously, Doc Rivers as head coach. Woj, I mean, that happened so fast. What a monumental change for this organization. But it leads to the question, what happens to Elton Brand, who was the GM before? Where is his autonomy in making decisions? How is this trio going to work? Well, th there is no more autonomy for Elton Brand, and I'm not sure there ever was autonomy. This is an organization where there are a lot of voices. I, I think Elton Brand is going to be a, a general manager, a very good general manager in the NBA for a long time. I think he's going to run teams elsewhere. He's got a decision to make now, and he'll talk with Daryl Morey about whether he wants to stay and be a part of this. I know the organization values him. Want They want to keep him. They've been chasing a, a big name uh, around the league to, to run their basketball operations. Back two years when they offered the job to Daryl Morey before they promoted Elton Brand uh, internally, uh, essentially Daryl Morey used it to leverage uh, for a new deal in Houston at that time. Uh, they pursued other top executives around the league, but uh, I, I think it remains to be seen in the short term what Elton Brand is going to do. Uh, listen, I think he did under very difficult circumstances. Uh, you know, he was thrown into the fire in Philadelphia, uh, taking over the team when he did. Uh, I think he's going to be better for the experience down the road. And uh, right now, though, this is going to be Daryl Morey's show. They're, they're going to give him, he's getting a big contract, I'm told, and, and he's going to have that, uh, you know, to make the decisions. Uh, and I think along with Doc Rivers' input, certainly as head coach, uh, about how they're going to proceed in Philly. Well, let's just talk a little bit more about Dora Morey, former team, the Houston Rockets. They obviously hired uh, Stephen Silas as their head coach. What does this mean for Russell Westbrook and James Harden going forward? Well, listen, I, I think this is a difficult job to fill right now for Stephen Silas, uh, replacing Mike D'Antoni, who, you know, obviously – uh, much more history there with James Harden than he did in the one year with Russell Westbrooks, but with Westbrook. But I, I think Harden and D'Antoni together really maxed out uh, their time together in terms of production. Uh, I think James Harden went to another level in D'Antoni's system, and now as an organization, and I think Stephen Silas coming in, you know, you wonder whether this is a group that has maybe gone as far as it can go together. They went to the small ball last year. This is a team that's been to the conference finals under Mike D'Antoni there uh, in, a, in a very loaded Western conference. Uh, this is a challenge for Steven Silas. He's earned the chance to be a head coach uh, almost 20 years as an assistant, grew up in the game. Obviously, people know his legendary father, Paul Silas, is a, is a Hall of Fame player and a, and a very, very good coach in the NBA. Uh, and I think his time under Rick Carlisle, you talked to Steven Silas, that's really impacted him in Dallas. But this is a challenging job, uh, and I think any success you're going to have with the Rockets is going to be built around your ability to connect with James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Well, how close were they to hiring uh, Jeff Van Gundy? <clears throat> they were close, uh, Key. They, they were uh, in talks with Van Gundy really over the last couple of weeks. And there were a lot of conversations uh, with ownership, with management, with him. In the end, I think for Jeff Van Gundy, the fit just didn't feel like it was there. You know, he, conti he has continued to live in the city of Houston ever since he left there uh, as coach about 13, uh, 14 years ago. Um, it's home for him. I, I do think the job was intriguing, but ultimately not a fit. Uh, for, I think, a variety of reasons. I do think he'll coach again somewhere in the NBA, uh, but Steven Silas was a candidate that they had been talking with throughout this process. Daryl Morey interviewed him uh, four years ago when they hired uh, Mike D'Antoni, and so, uh, listen, he gets a, a well-deserved opportunity here uh, to run the Rockets.
Rose, let's get to the nitty gritty. James Harden and Russell Westbrook owed $80 million next year. Those two, $80 million next year. If they are rebuilding, if that's the angle they're going, does James Harden want to stay in Houston? Or if they are rebuilding, is Russell Westbrook their tradable asset that they can use to entice to open up to bring other people to Houston for James to win a world championship in a packed West? I don't think the Rockets believe they are rebuilding. I think certainly, uh, again, it's a group that was built in a lot of ways to play small ball for Mike D'Antoni. Uh, they got a lot out of Robert Covington and P.J. Tucker, uh, that group. But once they traded Clint Capella to Houston, to Atlanta, you know, this team became uh, certainly really small. They want to continue forward with these two players right now. Uh, listen, I think James Harden... Uh, is still at the very, very top uh, of the league, at the top of his craft. You know, Russell Westbrook, you know, if you, I don't know what the market would be for, for Russ at his contract um, in the league right now. Listen, they got, uh, they gave up a great deal to get him from uh, Oklahoma City. Multiple picks, multiple pick swaps in the Chris Paul trade. And so I think right now they're married to that, uh, to the idea of the Harden-Westbrook uh, duo. But, you know, certainly things can change quickly in the league. And uh, this is a team, what I, I think a team and organization with a lot of pressure on it, you know, to continue to try to play at a high level. Or maybe you, maybe, uh, you are forced to make decisions. Maybe players start to make decisions about where they want to be. And so you know that when you, you're kind of walking a tightrope in the league when you have a player of Harden's caliber, if the team falls off about what that player wants. But right now, you know, they're, they're bringing in Steven Silas. They want to continue to contend, and, and they'll try to do that with this group. It's the start of a new era, and for more, all things Texas basketball with Silas coming over from Dallas to Houston and everything swirling about the Rockets. It's the perfect time for Woj to have Tim McMahon, who I think covers Texas basketball for us here at ESPN in the NBA with